Hi guys, Ed Bud here. Welcome back to the channel. I finally hit 100 miles in the Nike Zoomfly 3, so I aim to give you, my viewers, my friends, my buddies, my honest opinions on this carbon plate running shoe. Before I get into the review, please remember to subscribe, hit that like button, and also the bell for notifications when new videos are launched. So, as you all well know, if you've been watching some of my recent videos, I have a bit of a love-hate relationship with this shoe. One day it's all love and kisses, and the next it's abject dismay. <laughs> Might be a little bit harsh, abject dismay. Mm. Something like that, anyway. It's a lovely looking shoe with lots of different design ideas, innovations, and style. But it fails to deliver for me in the performance stakes, which is the top attribute. So will I be keeping the Zoomfly 3 within my running shoe rotation? Stay tuned to find out. So firstly, the fit of the shoe. Certainly when I first put this shoe on, it did feel strange. It felt a little long and it felt perhaps a little narrow in the forefoot. I did manage to fix this slightly strange sensation by utilizing some slightly thinner socks. But over the miles, that problem seems to have disappeared slightly. The upper seems to have given a little bit, certainly over this forefoot area. I think perhaps the neoprene material that forms the uh, part across the forefoot here has given a little bit and it's got a little bit more stretchy. Now at 100 miles, certainly the stance tab socks that I normally wear with my running shoes are certainly an option. I found that I've needed to tighten the laces quite considerably over this forefoot area here. And a problem with that is that the material seems to bunch slightly over the forefoot, creating a slightly uncomfortable feel. Also, the shoe starts to lose some of that fantastic aesthetic appeal that it does have. Because obviously when you're running, the look of your shoes is extremely important. The shoes could look like trash and it wouldn't matter to me. I think it's an important thing to some people that the shoe still looks aesthetically pleasing. I think ultimately Nike have aimed this shoe as a training partner for the Vaporfly Next Percent. But I have to say, good buddies and friends, that this shoe really doesn't feel like the Vaporfly Next Percent at all over the forefoot. It's a really very different feeling shoe on foot. Uh, you need to try it out for yourselves. Certainly it doesn't partner the Vaporfly equivalent as well as the Nike Zoomfly Flyknit did to the Vaporfly 4% Flyknit. There's a considerable amount of additional material here within the upper that really does set this shoe apart from its Vaporfly equivalent. I personally haven't felt any considerable discomfort from this additional material in the upper of the shoe. Certainly the mesh section around the forefoot here and the arch does do really well to provide some good lockdown and grip around the foot. But I have found that the laces supplied, which are the flat variety, are somewhat long for the shoe. Even if you're using the additional eyelets around the ankle and a runner's knot. The extra length hasn't bothered me, but I think that some runners may feel slightly irritated by it. I mean, you could just get some scissors and cut the laces down a little bit, I guess, but at some parts of your foot, there are three different materials around your foot. Certainly this mid foot section here. So you've got the vapor weave on the outside here. You've got a black perforated material that kind of goes around your foot and then you've got the mesh booty inside the upper as well. So there's three, three different materials. You know, Della Sol once said that three was the magic number, but I'm not entirely sure that three is the magic number here. In fact, it's the exact opposite of magic. It's unmagical. Yeah, something like that. I've got to say that I have noticed the additional weight of this shoe. It doesn't feel anywhere near as nimble um, and as sprightly as the Zoomfly Flyknit. There it is, Zoomfly Flyknit. This thing clocks in at about 10.6 ounces, about 300 grams. It, it really does feel quite a lot heavier to me than the Zoomfly Flyknit, and especially the Zoomfly original version that came prior to that. But I'll be getting back to that in a moment. The carbon plate in this shoe, to me, really doesn't feel anywhere near as propulsive as the Zoomfly Flyknit did. It doesn't feel anywhere near as prominent in this 2019 uh, version of the shoe. And I think that's probably the same for the 
Vaporfly Next Percent as well. Although with the Z-Max foam, it's just a massively different feeling shoe to this one. Ow. See, it's so heavy, I just moved my hand down and it's kind of, it, it almost broke my finger, it's crazy. I got the old Zoom Fly flying it out again recently uh, to take it out on a test run, just to see if my mind was kind of being kind of fogged by, you know, the uh, the rose-tinted spectacles, you know, the, the sweet memories, the sweet nectar of those memories in my mind. But it wasn't, and actually the Zoom Fly flying it just felt a hell of a lot better. I could still feel that propulsion that push off, it was still there within the Zoom Fly Flynet, and it simply isn't there within the Zoom Fly 3. My theory is that the increase in the amount of React foam within the midsole of the Zoom Fly 3 is kind of deadening that plate a little bit. It's diminishing its power, making it less responsive. I think also adding to that is the change in the heel to toe drop within this shoe from the round about 10 mil to eight mil in this version. I think those two things, those two factors are combining together to cause that effect. Hey, don't get me wrong. I loved the React in the Zoomfly Flynet, but here something feels different. Maybe they've tinkered with the formula. Maybe they've tried to tweak it a little bit. We may never know. But certainly for me, the Zoomfly Flynet midsole feels that a little bit softer, a little bit more responsive. Just feels like a bit of a slab in the bottom of the Zoomfly 3. So the outsole here has shown little signs of wear in the rear and the midfoot. There's some very light wear in the forefoot. You may be able to pick out here. I've mainly used this shoe on pavements, on roads. I've used it a little bit on some compacted sort of dirt trails and also some grass, but I don't really feel there's any considerable wear on the outsole of the shoe to make any comment. There's some very light cracking and compression of the midsole, but nothing really that I feel is alarming or worrying at all at this point with the shoe. I think the midsole is still showing some decent signs of responsiveness, although I do feel at 100 miles it is now beginning to mellow out a little bit. It is getting a little softer. But I mean, that's, that's a lot of miles for that to suddenly start happening. Maybe my foot's just becoming accustomed to the midsole material. I'm not sure, but at 100 miles, it seems like a lot of miles into the shoe for it to start mellowing out. Dwelling on the outsole of the shoe, I did have some quite humorous communications recently with a viewer, Kevin Burmaster. Thanks for uh, viewing Kev and all your support. Uh, certainly with the channel and on Strava also. Kev commented that he felt that the Zoomfly 3 outsole was one of the loudest outsoles of any shoe that he's currently using. I certainly have noticed this too, Kev. In fact, what I've done is created a short piece of music using sounds only generated by the shoe itself. I think if I got the shoe wet, I could perhaps coax a few additional sounds out of it as well to make a remix. Performance in the wet with this shoe has certainly been a mixed bag for me. The vapor weave sections, uh, they vent water without a problem, but the neoprene parts and the mesh pieces don't vent that water anywhere near as well as the vapor weave. Thus, towards the end of a quite wet run in these, I ended up with quite a heavy feeling shoe on foot. So yeah, you've got vapor weave in it, but it just seems to be one step forward, two steps back there. You've got all this extra stuff in the shoe and that seems to be hanging onto the water. So it's kind of a oxymoron really. So uh, 140 big ones, smackaroonies, you know, beer tokens, whatever you want to call them. Would I recommend you go out and buy this shoe? I've got to be honest, guys, no, I probably wouldn't at this point. I've put 100 miles into this one. I've really persisted with it. I've tried my absolute level best to try and get something out of it, but I kind of feel it's not working out for me. It just feels heavy. It feels cumbersome. It doesn't feel anywhere near as nimble as the previous version. And like I mentioned a moment ago, it just feels like a one step forward, two steps back kind of scenario. We've got more React in the shoe this time. That's just made the shoe heavier. We've still got the carbon plate, but that additional React 
certainly the forefoot of the shoe, just seems to have dampened the propulsive feeling that we felt within the Zoom Fly Flyknit. I think this previous version of the shoe still represents superb value if you're able to hunt one out. I really do love this shoe. It certainly feels a little bit mellower than the Zoom Fly 3. Uh, the Flyknit mesh, oh, it's, it's really is great. Breathable, um, certainly a shoe that I probably can still get some wear out of. I'm tempted to actually put this back into action now just to draw an even greater comparison against the Zoom Fly 3. There's some killer deals on the Zoom Fly Flyknit at the moment, so please seek those out. I think it's a better value and more versatile shoe than the Zoom Fly 3. If you're prepared to spend a little extra, you could probably pick up the Hoka Oni Oni Carbon X. A really fantastic shoe, an incredibly light shoe. This thing only weighs about 260 grams, that's 9.2 ounces. A much, much lighter competitor to the Zoom Fly 3, and I think it's probably a little bit more versatile. Certainly in terms of comfort, this is the clear winner. And I think it looks far more fly than the Zoom Fly 3. Mm, it smells good too. It's the Pro Fly Foam, it really does smell good. So I hope this video has been of use to you. Um, again, I'm going to try and persist if I can with the Zoom Fly 3. I know Kafuzi's had some success in changing the insole of the shoe, and that's made a big difference for him. At least enabled him to get some more mileage out of the shoe. It just feels a little cumbersome to me. I'm sure I can utilise it perhaps for some tempo runs here and there. Um, perhaps where the weather deteriorates, it might be okay. I can get out and utilise it then. I've tried, you know, I really have tried with this shoe. No one can say I didn't try. Certainly a shoe I would recommend that you try in store. You try it on foot first. Um, the sizing is odd on it. And it may just not suit your foot. Thanks for making it to the end of the video, guys. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. Please hit that subscribe button down in the corner there and click the bell for notifications of when new videos are launched. Make sure you hit like and comment down below if you've worn any of these shoes. Now I want to know your opinions on these different carbon plate shoes. I'm certainly enjoying that one. I'm enjoying that one and have enjoyed that one. I'm not so sure about this one. Okay, my name's Ed Budd and I'll be seeing you.